All right, everybody, how's your day going? I hope you're having a fantastic day out there today. A couple of weeks ago at the Mecham auction in Indy, one of the 12 1971 Hemi Cuda convertibles crossed the auction block. And of course, uh, this was something I watched live because I was very interested to see where the market is going with these cars. It's been a number of years since the last one of these has sold. And I've actually been able to meet the owner of this car and see it in person. So that gave me a little extra uh, factor for me wanting to watch the auction. Now, when the auction actually occurred, I debated on whether or not to do a video on this car and this auction. Uh, ultimately, I decided against it, but then with all the stuff I've been reading on Facebook groups and forums and stuff and a lot of misinformation about the car, uh, I decided I might as well go ahead and dive in and create a video for you on my thoughts on the auction, as well as the details of this vehicle. All right, so for starters, let's go ahead and break down the production numbers for the 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles. So for reference guide, I'm using Ula Nielsen's uh, book on the 71 Cuda for my references. And uh, I will go ahead and put a link in the description below to the interview I did with Ula for those of you who are interested. Uh, it's a really great person, really interesting stories uh, that he has to share. And I think you'll like those videos as well. So again, I'll put those in the uh, links to those in the description below. But back to the task at hand, let's go ahead and look at the breakdown for the 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles. So on page 47 of his book, it breaks down the number of 426 Hemi equipped 71 Cudas. For the convertibles for the US spec, there were seven total, two of them with four speeds and five of them with automatics. There was two 71 um, convertibles spec with an automatic for Canada. And then there were three for export over to uh, Europe. Uh, two of those are four speeds and one of them is an automatic. So the Mecham auction listed that there were three four speed equipped 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles. Um, based off of Ula's book, there are four. Um, so either way, there are either three or four equipped with a four speed of the 12 total produced. And from there, this particular car, in addition to being the only uh, 71 Hemi Cuda convertible in Winchester Gray, I believe it is also the only 71 Cuda convertible offered in Winchester Gray. Now, the reason why this is a more of a subdued color for the 71 Cuda is a lot of export cars were of the more subdued colors, whites, grays, blacks, things that were not as the high impact colors that were as popular here in the US, especially in Canada. And so it's definitely not a surprise to see that this one was produced and exported over to France. So in summary for the breakdown, it is one of 12 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles with a 426 Hemi. It's one of either three or four equipped with a four speed manual transmission and is the only one that was painted in the Winchester gray. So it is a one of one essentially, but when you've got only 12 to choose from, it's really easy to figure out that each one of them in one way or another is a one of one. No two are identical. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and dive into more of this car. So a lot of people, I've seen some articles posting that it was a, it was a barn find, it's been hidden for decades or whatever, and that's simply not the case. The car has been in the hands of its current owner for over 20 years now. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting the owner and seeing the car in person during the McCacken show, the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals in 2017. Uh, my friends, the Ogles Way Master introduced me to Tom during that event and we were able to go back to his place and see all these amazing cars. I have to say, Tom is an amazing person. Um, just the brief interaction I had with him, super nice, super down to earth and has a love for these amazing cars. Now, that being said, I've also seen a lot of stuff out there, people saying, oh, it's just another rich guy with fancy cars in Spain, way too much form and they never get driven, they just become museum pieces. And that's simply not the case either. Tom definitely drives these cars. There are videos here on YouTube of people, um, videos that have been posted where Tom is driving the car around Chicago. So the cars do get driven. So anybody out there saying that He's just a rich person that's just collecting museum pieces. That's just simply not the case. So the car, of course, it's an amazing car. It's a beautiful car. It did not sell at the auction. The bidding ended at $4.8 million, which I think is the highest any Hemi Cuda convertible has uh, crossed the block at, even though it did not sell. Uh, the estimates from Mecham, I think we're in the range of between 5.5 and 6.5 million. What the reserve actually was, I'm not sure. Um, but it was definitely worth more than what it was paying for. Of course, people are saying that, well, it's only worth what someone's willing to pay. No one paid more than 4.8 for it. Well, 
just means the right person wasn't in the room that day. It doesn't mean that the car is not worth it. Uh, I personally think the car is definitely worth over the $5 million mark, maybe even the $6 million mark. Um, given the, a little more time, it's definitely gonna go ahead and cross that block. Um, hit those high numbers. Uh, this car, of course, is well documented. It does retain its original numbers matching drivetrain and is an amazing example of not only a Hemi Cuda convertible, but of a Hemi Cuda in general or just a Cuda in general. Now, of course, I've also been seeing a ton of comments from people like, oh, he should have taken the money. He should have just let it go at the 4.8 million or whatever. How greedy does one have to be? Well, I don't know the details of why the car was put up for auction in the first place. I don't know what the reserve was been set out as I had mentioned earlier, but at the end of the day, if the deal wasn't right, the deal wasn't right. And if uh, the owner didn't feel that he needed to let the car go for anything less than what his reserve was set at, well, so be it. Um, who are we to judge what decisions the owner's making and the conversations that they had at Mecham? Um, Personally, I think it's at the end of the day, it's really none of our business where the financials uh, fall on these cars. Um, and it's up to the owner to decide what number they're comfortable at letting the car go at. And if the, they don't feel that the number that's reached is worthy of them letting the car go, well, don't let it go. Keep the car, enjoy it some more. Uh, it's an amazing car to enjoy and why not hang on to it if you can't get the number that you want for it. So those are my initial thoughts on the auction of the 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible uh, that crossed the auction block at Meekum's Indianapolis event last month, May of 2021. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll be able to get out there and do a video with the car in person. Uh, we'll see how that goes, uh, see how the rest of the year goes and if Tom hangs on to the car. Um, but if you're interested in another video I've done on another 71 Hemi Cuda convertible, I will also include a link in the description below to the video of the interview I did with Wade Ogle and his 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible rally red car and the history behind that car. It has a truly remarkable history. It is the known as the missing 71 Hemi Cuda convertible. It was the last of the US spec cars to surface and it has quite an interesting history including being used as a dune buggy in the 70s in Arizona. So check out that video as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I also include links in the description below for the interviews I did with Ula Nielsen. He's got some amazing stories about uh, writing the book on the 71 Cuda as well as his world travels and the registry he's running on the e-body convertibles. So that's today's video. I hope you found this information useful. As always, if you did, go ahead, smash that like button. Give me that thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously with that YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you want to be kept up to date with all my future uploads, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well. So that way YouTube will keep you up to date with all of my future uploads. And as always, guys, I will see you the next video.